Right here we have a continuation. Oh, what's going on? I think this uh, thing is right here. All right. Here we have a continuation of what we started yesterday. Oh, no, 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 no. One second. Where's the picture? The picture is gone. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. All right. So here we have a continuation of what we started yesterday. Namely, that it's <clears throat> going to heaven is very nice. Very nice. But that certainly is not happy. It's not happy. Going to heaven is a place where you get pleasure from, and it's wonderful, but happiness is only really to be found in this world. Why? True happiness. Because in this world, you can serve Hashem. In this world, you can actually do what God wants to, and you can defy your own self. So there's victory in this world. You can defy your own nature and serve the Creator. And this makes the Creator happy. That's what it says in the Torah, that God is happy. Nachat Ruach. Shalmarti Vanasa Rotoni, that God is happy whenever his will <clears throat> is done. Okay, so, so here the Rebbe is talking about something like this. Listen, the point of Judaism is to tell everybody that God exists and that God creates everybody and that God gives everyone responsibility. And that's the essence of man. And, and that's the job of the Jews is to tell everybody this. And the Jews, in addition to that, they also have what's called commandments. Jews have commandments. In addition to every moment that every human being is enjoined, is obligated to be honest and to be loving and to be caring and to give charity and to be truthful. But, <clears throat> but in addition to that, the Jewish people have what's called commandments. And commandments, that attaches the world to the creator. And it makes the create, that's, the, that's God's will. And when God's will is done, so he's happy. So the Jews have a chance in this world to make God happy. And that should make us happy. This whole business comes down to love. Love. Love is essential. Love is the essential. I do you say it makes the world go around, makes the world exist. Love. God creates the world from love. A lot of people in the world nowadays, love is a very, very cheap, how do you say, worthless commodity. People don't want love nowadays. <clears throat> they want, you know, pleasure. They want whatever, you know, Freud and these guys, all these things, they're, they're, they're responsible for this, that they reduced man so that everything you do is, is questionable. No one does anything. There's nothing as genuine. Everything has an ulterior motive. You do it for power. You do it for pleasure. You do it for something. But that's that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a terrible, awful lie that modern psychiatry or psychology or philosophy or whatever it is has foisted off on mankind. It's not so. The essence of of, of reality is love. Love and appreciation. That's why God creates us. That's why God gives us responsibility. Everybody is from love. And when we feel a little bit of what God's love is for us, then we reciprocate. And there's no feeling that's more human and more fulfilling than love. You know, it used to be in the in the previous generations that love was like sexual, you know, I love these songs, love songs, <clears throat> some sort of, you know, a person has a feeling of love, lacking of love. But the fact is, is that love is really very essential. There's all sorts of types. There's all there's many types of love. And nowadays, nowadays society, they want to eliminate all of them. Love between a man and his wife. Love between parents and their children. Love between uh, children and their parents. How children love between brothers. Love between relatives. Nowadays, the, 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 these woke people, they want to eliminate family. There won't be any more brothers, no more sisters, no more children, no more fathers, no more mothers, no more children, no more babies, no more any. Right? 
to change the, to, to, to divert the power of procreation really basically means to divert love. I mean, love is not <clears throat> what you receive. Love is appreciation. And the more deeply you love something, the more unconditional is the appreciation of that thing. So that's the idea of Judaism is to love God. God is creating us. God is, is enlivening us. God is giving us all of our senses, our powers, our abilities, the whole entire world to appreciate God, to appreciate the creation, how precious every moment is. That's what love. Okay, so says the Rebbe, this feeling of love <clears throat> is, is also very, how do you say, a, a, a deep. And there's many different types of love of God. And there's, but there's one big difference between loving God and loving people or loving your family, your, your mother, your father, your wife, your children, a friend, loving friends. <clears throat> and that is that, like we say, God is actually creating us. And so the love that we have from us is, is awakened inside of us <clears throat> from the essence of our being. Because we're being created by God. So the essence of our being. Okay, who, get, who gets this love? Who gets this love? But God creates us in a, in a way, and that's the whole idea of creation. The angels, for instance, they have this love. They have this burning, flaming love of God. They want to go this. Right? And the Rebbe is going to tell us that it's not really so. The angels don't really have this love. The angels, we're going to see in a moment. The angels love God because of something. But let's say, let's say that the angels, right? The angels are, are not hampered by their egotism. So let's say they approach this type of love. What does it mean, love? True appreciation of the creator. In this world, God created us in a way we don't even feel that there is a creator. All we feel is ourselves. And all we love is ourselves. And that's not really true love. That's the love that like Freud and all these other people talked about. <clears throat> Right, that's everything is selfish and everything is for an ulterior motive, and you don't really love your mother. <clears throat> you only do it because it's a sexual drive, and you don't really love your father. You do it because you're afraid of him, or you don't really love any. Just do it for power or for status or to, you know, for some ulterior motive to reveal your potential to, to uh, the, the how do you say, to be who you are to whatever it is. <clears throat> but, the, but what we're trying to preach over here is is true love. And it's truly not thinking about yourself, thinking about the creator. And who's, how, how much God loves you, God, or me, or whatever. God's creating us. Okay, so, says the Rebbe, when a person dies and he goes to heaven, he gets a little bit of this love. He gets a little bit of the feeling. And that's called just a ray of godliness. It's called a ziv, nani mi ziv. That the souls go up to heaven, they get this ray of godliness. Even though that this is also called the source of love, like it says, it's worthwhile all of the pains. We did this yesterday, I'm just going over it. It's worthwhile all the pain and suffering to go to hell. And it says, we talked about this, remember yesterday, that the pains in hell, even one second in hell, is like 70 years of insufferable pain. And it's worth to go to hell for a long time, for years, just to have one moment of the pleasure of going to heaven. That's how intense the pleasures of going to heaven is. But the fact of the matter is, nevertheless, the pleasures you get into heaven, that's that you get in heaven, it's pleasure that you get. And in this world, we give pleasure to the creator of the universe. This makes no sense, but it's true. And when we feel, when we feel, we believe, we get a little bit of this feeling that the what we do in this world gives God pleasure, then that gives us a tremendous pleasure. We'll talk about that. Okay. When we haven't talked about happiness yet. Happy, the, the secret of this whole business is going to be happiness. <clears throat> We're going to talk about this. <clears throat> That's like the spare tire. If you don't have love, you have happiness. We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that. Even though, even though this level of person going <clears throat> into heaven and feeling these tremendous pleasures is also called the source of like, like life, like it says, it's worthwhile all the pains of hell, <clears throat> all the pains of heaven, of, of hell, in order to go to heaven. But we talked about that yesterday with, with, uh, with uh, what was his name? Alicia Benavua, 
in Rabbi Meir. Afilumachi, nevertheless, who rak bechinas imcha. This is just like with God. Like it says, ve'eno erech kol, and it's not comparison comparable at all to the infinite light of God Himself, because even the heavens were only created from one little letter of God called the letter Yud. Shakal bechinas olam abo. That all the letter levels of the of the spiritual worlds. Eno elo bechinas nekud. It's just like a little point. So, I mean, that's the basic motivation for all the religions in the world is going to heaven. You go to heaven, you get pleasures you can't believe. <coughs> pleasures <coughs> <coughs> pleasure. take all the drugs in the world, all the victories in the world, all the whatever it is in the world you could possibly have, all the possible pleasures you could possibly dream of. Don't dream about it too much because you'll know you won't. <coughs> it'll wreck your whole day. All the pleasures in the world, all the, the good meals and the good this, everything you want, right? And the meal, that is nothing compared to going to heaven. And all the pleasures that are in heaven are just like a little tiny drop, a little tiny point of what godliness is. And that pl true pleasure of God is really available to us in this world, feeling this love. And therefore, don't make the what is the secondary thing? Don't make the number two, which is going to heaven, number one. Bishvil ha ha legarme shalom because of his own self. That's what's called in the Mishnah serving God without any thought of even going to heaven. That's what's called serving God shalom and not like Abu Pras, not in order to receive reward. That's true service of God, serving God without thinking about any reward whatsoever. Shebechin is nani miziv, that you, you don't want to even get the pleasures of going to heaven. This is called pras. It's called a, a prize. The word pras also means a little piece, a little, a little. She'enu rak prusa. It's just like a little piece of godliness. Milashen alo prus l'rav lecha. Do you not like cut, cut off for the bread, for the poor, a little piece of bread. Look, in inu chafetz beprusa. Therefore, you do not desire in this little piece, a little sort of a, a, a whatever of a, a crumb of godliness that you receive <coughs> if you go to heaven. Baziv said, "This is kiim lashtava v'guf of malka." All he wants, all you should want, is to be included in the body of the king. Himself, in the essence of Orin Sov Borahu. Asher Sham Prusanal, then all this little crumb of all the pleasures that you get in heaven are Kalochashib, they're like nothing. like a drip drop in the ocean. Ocean. <clears throat> okay, I think. You can see this in day-to-day in -day life. I mean, you don't have to really go so far. Let's take a simple example, sports or um, music. Maybe in music, you can see it better than anywhere else. Music or art or, or any person who is really devoted. We talked about this before, a medicine or whatever. Let's take an example of, of a musician, right? M music. A person who's really, truly a musician. He loves the music more than anything else. The pleasure that he gets from playing music <clears throat> is incomparable to the pleasure that he gets from being famous or or, or getting paid, being, being rich. <clears throat> being the top. He gets pleasure from those things. He gets pleasure from everybody saying he's the best violinist in the world, and he gets play, paid like a million dollars for every performance. And his new, he gets pleasure from those things. But the main pleasure he gets, which is incomparable to the others, is when he's playing that music. When he's playing the music, so to speak, he's not even there. He's not there. He is 100% music. <clears throat> but you're, you're great pianists playing. And there's there's one or two that I'm really, I mean, officially one that I'm really a very big fan of. A lot of people were. It doesn't make any difference. But you just hear him play, it's just totally different. You just hear the person who's just sunk <clears throat> into the music. I, okay. So it means that you know, a doctor, a doctor that gets pleasure from healing people, 
he gets pleasure from the money. He gets pleasure from being, you know, the head of the company. But the main thing is, is he gets pleasure from healing people. There was a famous, what was his name, Dr. Volach or someone in, in Israel. He had, I think, Shari Tzedek in Yerushalayim. And he used to work day and night just healing people. All he cared about was healing people. And so, and I mean, in a, in a way, you know, he didn't sleep, he didn't eat, and he had to suffer, to, you know, from whatever it was. But the pleasure that he got, it's not wasn't a personal pleasure. It was a pleasure from healing, right? Who who who, who can get such an appreciation? <clears throat> What's worth all the money? Anybody can get money, right? Criminals can get money. <clears throat> fame, you can get the people, the most debauched people in the world. You can get fame, you get pleasure, and all that goes away. But the person, the pleasure that he gets from healing, that's eternal. That's an eternal thing. He's not, it's not, it doesn't go away. It's not, it's not his thing. He just partook of a thing which is greater than himself. <clears throat> that's the idea of, of music, of beauty, of this. That's just a small example. That's 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 a small example. But here we're talking about even going to heaven which is a case where you feel godliness and you don't feel yourself, still you feel yourself compared to the pleasure of feeling that you're being created every moment and that you're really nothing. That's what it means. King David said, Nafshi abisicha, my soul desires you like a person that desires to live. <clears throat> and therefore, bocher yoter bebechines apras, shuhu rak ziv, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right. That's what it means. My soul desires you. Therefore, all he wanted was just the letter Yud. He wants something. Because I want to be me and I want to receive heaven or whatever. Excuse me. That's what's in the Bishtava, but he doesn't want to be negated. To be surrendered like a light in <coughs> in the um, in in a like a small f a flame in a torch, right? You take a little a candle, you put it next to a torch, and it unites with the torch, so there's no candle anymore. It's like they they explain in the Tanya, it's like the ray of a light of the sun, sunlight when it's inside the sun. It's not a ray anymore. But that's really called ahava. Okay. Okay, so if so, we have two types of love. One type of love is being totally included in the oneness of God, which who merits to a thing like that? But that, the Rebbe says that there is such a thing, and that's true, and that everybody's going to have that in the days of the Mashiach. And the other one is called that you want to go to heaven, that you want to be clinging to God, and you want to be one with God, and you want to be this with God, but you still you want to be. You want to be yourself. That's natural. We should, it should only be we should get to that. That level. But nevertheless, that's called small love. This small love is called nekeva. It's called feminine. Shadata kala. That it's very, how do you say, uh, 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 impermanent. Shaoseta tafel ikra. That you made the secondary thing, the main thing. Hainu almanas the kabal pras. In order to receive a reward. You're doing the Torah. You're doing the commandments. You believe in God. Because you want to get something out of it. Bishvil Lagarmi doesn't is doing it for his own self. That's what it means. My soul desires you. My soul desires you that I want to be me, but I desire you. This is called Adlaila. It's called the Nafshi Abisiha Balaila. It says, My soul desires you in the nighttime. And in Psalms. Shibikinis Abazu, this love is called nighttime. This is called night. <clears throat> love in the nighttime. In other words, you love God, but you don't see, all you see is yourself. <inaudible> That's what it means. <inaudible> That's what it means. Okay. Th th that's okay. So if so, we have two types of love. One type of love is selfish, and it also can be easily <clears throat> uh, dissipated when you f have love for something else. And then there's a love for God, which is powerful, and nothing can move it. Nothing can move it. That's like the love of Abraham, the love of King David, right, of God. No matter how much bad there was, they have tremendous desire and yearning for God all the time, and God reciprocates with this tremendous inspiration that they get. Okay, so that's what it means 
when the woman gives seed first, then she gives birth to a male. What does it mean? That if the, the Jewish people, they're the woman, if we make a decision that we're going to love God no matter what, <clears throat> no matter what, then God gives us inspiration that we don't think about ourselves and we do have this big love. We do have this tremendous love for God, which is called masculine, powerful love that is unmoving. Which is not the case, which is not the case, if the man, which that's God, if he gives seed first, then the resultant love is feminine. It's known that love and fear that a person arouses in his soul, this is just an arousal from below. <clears throat> and God reciprocates with a love and a fear that comes from above, that he inspires us. We begin as Esarusatila and arousal from above. Lochan, therefore, Im Esarusatilatata, therefore, if the arousal from below comes first, namely what Shemiyagea Atzmo, that a person makes a big effort, Lahorid Ava Viyira, to bring down love and fear, Miruach Binaso from his own understanding. That he tries, he thinks, he meditates, he contemplates, he tries to think about God as much as possible. He tries to feel God as much as possible. He tries to feel, I am being created by God. The world is being created by God. How amazing God is. Then, if you do the work from below, then, then there's a God reacts. <clears throat> then from, he reacts from a higher level, or from the inside of the light and light force, which shines or in so in the Jewish people. And that's what it means. There shines a masculine love. In other words, if we are the ones that we arouse, we're the feminine, and we arouse ourselves to God. So we're sort of, so to speak, we're arousing God, even in the time of we don't feel godliness. We don't, we try, we make an effort, no matter what happens to us, like King David did, for instance, all the troubles that he had, nevertheless, he still loved God. Right? He still tried as much as he could to love God and to believe in God. Then, Yaro Allah, then there is a, an arousal from above, Ruach Mimarom, Lios Ahava, that your love is Ahava Rava, a, a great love. Lamailam Yasaga, above understanding. Above understanding even of your soul. Then you will desire to be one with the king. Huh? So the Rebbe's. The Rebbe is not just telling us a side thing. You know, he's not telling us, you know, how to be a, uh, you know, the master pianist. <clears throat> not everybody's going to be a master pianist. You, how to be a, you know, the, the champion of the world in boxing, whatever. Not, not everybody can be a champion in the world in boxing. You can't, you know, you can't do it. But here the Rebbe is trying to tell us that everybody can and everybody will have this true love of God. <clears throat> The Tanya comes and tells us that this is the, that's what's how you're born. When you're born, you're given an oath to be a tzaddik. You're given an oath. The Tanya then goes on to explain that you're, you're probably not going to make it, but you have to try. You have to try. On the other hand, you have to be not disappointed when you don't make it, that you don't have this tremendous love. But this tremendous love of God, that's reality. That's what reality really is. That just like you love yourself more than anything else, in the future, you'll love God more than everything else. And then you'll also love yourself, but you'll love yourself on God's terms. Infinite love, you're, you'll love yourself infinitely more than you can possibly imagine. Because God loves you. That's God is creating you. You're not creating yourself. So that's what's talking about this true love of God that you don't think about yourself at all. In fact, you realize that I am a creation and that God is infinitely good that he's creating me. And therefore, every detail of my life and of my being, I have to be—I have to use everything I have to thank God with. <clears throat> That's called reality. That's the message of the Jews to the world. That's what it means that God is one. I'm happy to be created. And I want to fill my obligation to the Creator. <clears throat> In other words, you don't really feel yourself. <clears throat> you feel the Creator. 
But sometimes, and how do you get this feeling? By trying in this world to love God as much as possible and to think about these things that we're thinking about and hoping that God will inspire us because without this inspiration from God, you can't do it on your own. You can't do it exactly the opposite. The fact that you're doing it is, is that prevents itself from, from receiving this love. You make yourself an empty vessel for godliness and God reciprocates. Okay, that's what the Rebbe is saying. Now, don't think that I am at this level. I'm reading about this and I know that it exists and I believe 100% that it exists, but don't think I am speaking from experience. <clears throat> I would like to be speaking from experience, but... Uh, <clears throat> Nevertheless, if you've seen the Rebbe, you've seen pictures of the Rebbe, you see the you see that the, it's this is possible, and not only is it possible, it is that's the goal of mankind. <clears throat> that's a, okay. Ah, but sometimes a kam is the tata, even though you're not thinking about God and you don't even care about God, you forgot about the whole thing totally. Milamata in calls in nevertheless nimshach asus the teleila. God arouses you first. The order as a result of the tata, and that arouses an arousal from below. Huh? Sometimes you see these Jews that they have no connection to God, no connection to anything whatsoever, and all of a sudden they get a feeling, an arousal from above. Nowadays it's very common, right? Guys walking down the street, hey, you dirty Jew, right? Dirty Jew, get out of Palestine, get out of Palestine. What are we talking about? I'm not, how, what do you think I'm a Jew for? Yeah, you're a Jew, right? You're a Jew, right? Aren't you a Jew? Yeah, if you say, no, no, I'm, I'm not a Jew. I'm, uh, you know, anything that looks like Jews. You know, I'm Italian. I'm an Arab. I know this, all the Jews from all these different countries, they look like the people that are in the countries, basically. Oh, they say, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean it. Right? But it, it, it doesn't, Jew doesn't do that. Hey, you dirty Jew. They don't turn around and say, hey, I'm not a Jew. Right? They say, hey, I am a Jew. What do you got against the Jews? Here's a non-religious Jew. All of a sudden, an arousal came from above. God gave him an arousal from above. He sent somebody to call him a dirty Jew. And he starts to think, what does it mean that I'm a Jew? What does that mean? Right? What does it mean? And he starts to have a little sort of a feeling, you know, what is the, why does everybody hate me? What, what's going on? Why did he say something bad about the Jew? What's a Jew? Am, am I that important that he hates me? What, what's, a, <clears throat> what's going on? Suddenly that's an arousal from above. All of a sudden he an arousal. But right? he's sitting in, in some bar somewhere, who knows where, in Amsterdam, totally... No, no religion, no Jewish identity whatsoever. And he hears on the television, you know, today is the day of repentance. Jews from throughout the world are flocking to their synagogues and they, they're not eating. And all of a sudden he says, wow, Jews are this. Everybody says, hey, uh, the, the Yorick, what, what's, what's wrong? He says, oh, I'm a Jew. You're a Jew? Yorick, you're a Jew. No, don't call me Yorick. Call me Yehuda. What? You're Jewish? I don't believe it. He got an arousal from above. Something all of a sudden reminded him he's a Jew. Something reminded him that there's God. <clears throat> Something, well, if that happens, in other words, you didn't do anything from below whatsoever. The arousal came from above. If that's the case, then really what aroused you was not this anti-Semite, and it wasn't the television. It was God. And God sent it through this anti-Semite, that he sent it through the television, that all of a sudden he was saying, doing, you're a Jew. Wake up. Hello. Dodi Dofik. He's knocking on your heart. You're a Jew. That's what's called Ish Mazri Tachil. That's what means that God, he's sending the impulse first. You didn't do anything to arouse God. God did it on his own. And that's what it says by Mashiach, that God is going to gather up the Jews one by one. It says, Echad Achad Yisrael. Gather up the Jews. This is an arousal from above. This is called, this is an arousal from above. Why? Since this arousal from above, that God aroused you to be a Jew and to realize what that there is God and that God loves you and he cares about you. He's creating you and he's giving you responsibility. That's called an arousal from above. But because there was no vessel for this, there was no arousal from below. So therefore, it's only external love of God, the Chayos Meir, which shines infinite light of God on you. Therefore, Afalpi, even though she more even though that arouses, he tavu that an arousal from below, 
the resultant love that comes from this, that God started the whole business, because there is an arousal from above, and that arouses you from below, and that's an arousal from below, but holada, but the resultant love is only nekeva. It's a what's called feminine aspect. It's not firm. She have zutra. It's called a small love. Haniskar leil larava simono, and only just to satisfy his thirst a little bit. What does that mean? I'm a Jew, right? You're a Jew. I, I, I'll do something. You know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to buy a little pendant with a, our Jewish star on it. And I'm going to wear it around my neck and I'm going to be proud of it. And that's my Judaism. In other words, he's, he did something for Judaism. But a little bit, you know, a little bit. <clears throat> he's not going to pour out his soul, the bittle, to be so totally surrendered, like a little candle in front of a torch. The Zohar. Okay, now I gave you an, an, an a exaggerated example, but this also refers to, you know, religious people. People that do Torah, they do the commandments, they do everything, right? But loving God, it's, you know, it's a very nice thing, especially when we learn. But it's not a major priority in life. Learning Torah, doing the commandments, you know, getting along with your family, with people, you know, go to the synagogue, you pray, and this. But you're not thinking about loving God and desiring to love God. Maybe when you pray, you do a little bit. A little bit. It says, a person like that, religious guy, once in a while, God sends you an arousal from above, an inspiration. Ooh, you start. This especially happens when you're praying. Especially this happens when you're praying. You're praying, you're a little bit open, and you're a little bit, right, you're, you're, you're sensitive to godliness. All of a sudden, you get a feeling, wow, you know, God's creating the world. Wow, you know, before the world was created, there was nothing. Wow. The Jewish people, when they are in this level of the Jewish people, they are in a way that we depend totally on God arousing us. That's pretty much the way it is now. That's called akara. That's called barren. Why is it called barren? It says they give birth to a feminine. It says it gives birth to a, even though it gives birth to a feminine, to a female love, we said, this weak love, this is called small love. Nevertheless, it's called akara. It's called being barren. Why is it called being barren? What's wrong with giving birth to a woman, to a girl? What's wrong? It's like she doesn't give birth at all. Why? Because this, it's not coming on its own by means of an arousal from below. Okay, the, the, the metaphor sort of breaks down at one point. I mean, giving birth to a girl is a good thing, not, not a bad thing. But giving birth to this feminine love is also a good thing. You love God. Who loves God? It's a pretty, it's an unusual thing to love God. Who, who loves God? Even though the Rebbe is talking about it here, like it's, you know, the, the opening up your window and, you know, seeing the morning or something like that. It's not, you know, he's talking about a normal, regular thing, which that's what it's going to be in the days of the Mashiach. But nowadays, a person get, having love in God, that's a big deal. Uh, who loves God? Right? It's not easy. And even if the love is a feminine love of God, a weak sort of a love, but it's a love of God. Says the Rebbe, nevertheless, it's not really <clears throat> my child, so to speak. It's not really my child. It comes by means of an arousal from above. Ishmazriya Tachila. It's almost like adopting a child, right? You adopt a child, the child is very nice, but it's not really your child. It's not really yours. It's there, but it's not really yours. If someday the child realizes somebody's, you know, he, who his real mother and father are, is, so it's a different type of love he's going to have for them, for you, than from you. You're not really, it's the same type of a thing over here. Love of God that comes unexpectedly, unpreparedly, all of a sudden, you feel reality that God is, wow, he's creating me, this, this, but you didn't do anything to prepare for it. You didn't, so to speak, arouse God. Then the love that results is not really permanent. It's sort of like adopting a child. It's not really yours. It's not really yours. It's a love that's, that came, it's sort of borrowed. Raksha Nimshach, it just came because God had mercy on you and he gave you an arousal from above that's called the man gives seed first. 
<clears throat> this is not really my birth. I didn't really give birth to this love. Therefore, it's called akara. Therefore, it's called barren. <clears throat> okay, so the Jewish people, if they're dependent on God to arouse us, then it doesn't last for very long. And maybe we can see this, the, the examples, two shocking examples. One is God taking us out of Egypt and giving us the Torah and taking us through the desert. Because God did everything. So at the first opportunity the Jews had, they worshiped the golden calf. They did whatever they can. The same thing we had now with the, 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 the Six-Day War. Right? The Six-Day War. Amazing miracle. The whole world was just on their feet, you know, applauding Israel. And they were afraid. <clears throat> and everybody suddenly, they honored us. Even the Arab countries, right? They all honored us. And they were all, you know, in awe of the Jews. And they said, well, we made a big mistake, you know, this. Okay, but what happened? What happened? In both cases, what happened? Big miracles for Jews. Jews were running, non-religious, they were running to the Kotel and putting on tefillin. Thousands of Jews were all of a sudden waking up, but it didn't last long because the whole thing came from God alone and we didn't do really anything from below. So the love, resultant love, there was love and God, people appreciated God, but it went, went away. It dissipated quickly. Huh? went away. And we can see that also in our personal lives. God does a big favor for us. Wait, and he gives, all of a sudden we win the, 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 get a, the money, we get something. Amazing things happen to us, right? But it goes away. It goes away. But if the love is love, that we're working very hard, and we believe in God, and we try to feel the oneness of God, then that arouses the essence of God, and we have a tremendous love. But who does that? Who does that? So let's live in reality now. Let's live in reality. In the days of the Mashiach, everyone is going to have this tremendous love. But the thing is, is here what the Rebbe is trying to say, it all depends on us. We cannot get this tremendous high love as a gift. We have to do something. We have to make a vessel. If we don't make the vessel, we don't try from below, then any love, any inspiration, any realization that we have of what God is, what a Jew is, it's going to be short-lived. Therefore, it's called, therefore, we're, that's, therefore, it's called Akara. <clears throat> There's another mime where he says, Meshake Lab. Okay, it says Akara. Then that's called barren. So that's, if, so we're lost. We're lost. We haven't got any arousal from below. And we, we, the, the goal is to have this tremendous high love and powerful love. And we can't, get, we can't even get the lowest aspect of love. We're not, we're not trying to come close to God at all. And we can't. We're not, says the Rebbe. That's what the sentence says. That's what the whole point we're just learning about. Let's go back to where it was here. Where is this? Where is there? Sos Tussis, rejoice, rejoice, and be happy. The barren woman, the kibbutz banel, when her sons, male sons, are gathered together to her. What we just finished saying that if she's akara, that if she is barren, then she can't give birth to male love, masculine, powerful love, only feminine love. That's called akara. If so, where does she get? And she'll be happy when she gathers her children together, her sons. How does she get sons? She's barren. So it says that's exactly the point. That's what we're trying to tell uh, you. That says, Tagel Akara, that she will be happy when her sons are gathered to her. Why? It says, Basimcha. What's the end of the sentence? Here, where it says, uh, here, Basimcha, with joy. What's going now? We're going, that's now we're going to talk about what joy is, happiness. Sha'af, yeah. even though Shagam Shahu Bibikina Sakara, even though that I am in the level of Akara, I can't give birth to this masculine love. I can't give birth to the powerful love of God. I'm waiting for God to arouse me, for God to send some sort of inspiration. Ella, she'es Rusa de la Tata, Maktim, Lavo, 
the aura as I'm waiting for God that he should make an arousal from above so that I will come to love him. If so, that's what we just finished saying is the lowest level of love, and we can't reach true love for God. Nevertheless, kibbutz bonel, you can have male sons, in other words, a tremendous strong love of God. Let us zakhar that she will give birth to a male. Eh, how can it be? By means of joy. What does it mean by means of joy? But the joy of the commandments. Yochal Yotar can be this level. Even though that a man gives birth first. <clears throat> In other words, God, we're relying on God to arouse us. He's the man, arouse us first. Nevertheless, it will give birth to a powerful love. How is it? What does it mean? What is this joy? Okay, this is going to be a little bit sort of shocking what we're going to say now, but here we go. <clears throat> it says like this. There's in, in the Torah, there's two Torah portions where God talks about curses. The first one is in Parshas B'chukosai. The there, there's 49 curses that arouse, that await the Jewish people if they don't do what God wants. And later on in Parshat Kitavo, near the end of the Torah, there's 98, twice as many, 98 curses. Again, some people say it's the first temple, the second temple. In any case, a lot of curses are waiting. And it says over there by the curses that one of the reasons you get the curses is because it says, because because you did not serve God with joy and with a good heart, mirov call from the great abundance. Therefore, avarata therefore you will now serve your enemies. <clears throat> that's what it says. You want to know why God sends all these weird enemies and captures the Jews and tortures them and does these bizarre things to the Jews. Why? Because you're not serving God in happiness from the great abundance that I gave you. Therefore, you're going to serve your enemies. <clears throat> so it says, one second, what does it mean? Even though you did not serve God with happiness... At first glance, it seems to be saying that you did serve God, you did the commandments, but you didn't do it in happiness. And because you weren't happy serving God, therefore you get the, 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 the Babylonians and the Romans and the Nazis and the, this. That's what it says, but that, that's that's pretty severe. I mean, that, that's that's pretty scary. The Chior, at first glance, Mashma, it seems, the Alpha people know that you are serving God. You are serving God, but you're not serving God with happiness. <clears throat> what does the sentence say? Why are you being punished? Why did God send these enemies? Because you're not serving God. Huh? Because you're not serving God, therefore God is punishing you. That's not what it says. <clears throat> it says because you're not serving God in happiness. It seems that you are serving God. You're doing the commandments. You're doing everything God wants you to do. You're eating kosher. You're keeping Shabbat. You're praying. You know, but you're not doing it with happiness. As I, therefore, comes this terrible punishment that you're going to serve your enemies. This is not understood at all. Why should it be such a mar bitter punishment? Because just because I'm not happy. I'm doing what God says. I'm doing what God says. I'm doing his commandments. <clears throat> God says, no, you're not doing it in happiness. Therefore, here comes Attila the Hun or whoever it is. There comes, you know, Muhammad, and he's going to kill all the Jews. <clears throat> I just finished reading now that the, there was one place that Muhammad came and he killed like eight, beheaded 800 Jews because they didn't accept. One Jew accepted Islam and they let him live. <clears throat> It says, why do Jews get such terrible things? Because they don't serve God in happiness. If you read the 98 curses that are over there, you'll see that much worse, the, the curses are much worse than, than, than things that happened. I mean, maybe those things did happen. <coughs> if so, <coughs> every Jew has some sort of blemishes. Because of this, there's such a tremendous punishment. If you would serve God with happiness, happiness of the commandments, then the power of joy would be 
that you would get arouse happiness from above, and this would negate all the dinim. Let's look at it the other way around. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> it's something like the Rebbe said, there was once a terrible tragedy that this was when Arafat, and that the Israeli government figured they could make peace with them. But Arafat, Yomach Shemom, his name be burn in hell forever. He and his men, they, they took over a, a school in the city of Malot over here, and they killed like 50 children. <clears throat> terrible, terrible tragedy. And the Rebbe said that they should check the mezuzahs of the place. And they checked and they found there were exactly the number of mezuzahs not kosher, or the doors that were missing mezuzahs or whatever, as there were children killed. And the Rebbe said, don't think that I'm trying to say that this was a punishment. It was definitely not a punishment. That's not what I'm talking about. What I am saying is that the mezuzah protects and that there's a lot of evil in the world and that if a, a Jews do the commandments, and the, that's the reason why <clears throat> in the Holocaust and these things, why do these things happen? Because Hitler and those people, they're evil. Right? Why is there anti-Semitism? Because people are evil. And the Jews potentially are good. The Jews are the representatives of God in the world, They're saying that life is precious and that every moment is precious. And people don't like that message. People like it. So they want it. That's why there's always anti-Semitism. From the time of Abraham, it started. <clears throat> it's all story of the Torah. People, the Jews against the world. A lot of times the, the, the Jews also join the world, right? <clears throat> so the Jews against the Jews, the Jews against the but the world, so th there's a lot of bad in the world, a lot of evil in the world. But if the Jews do the Torah and the commandments, that protects them. <clears throat> that protects them. If the if they would have had these mezuzahs on the doors, it would have protected them. It's not that they got punished. And the Rebbe said, like a soldier that goes into war without a helmet, it's not that he gets punished because he doesn't have a helmet. It's just the helmet protects him. The same thing is the Rebbe is saying over here: joy, joy protects you. If you have the joy of the commandments, then that makes you <clears throat> uh, protected from the world. Huh? You're protected from the world. So it says the reason, the Rebbe says, why? It says it's because this joy that you have <clears throat> can arouses this love. And we're going to stop the class now, but I want to just say, what, what does the joy come from? The joy comes from the commandments. What's so happy about the commandments? He says, you have to think for one second, where did these commandments come from? Right? If you think the commandments came from Moses, or the commandments of Moses just went up on the mountain for 40 days and whatever, and he sat up there and you know smoked uh, marijuana or something, and he came down with all these laws. <clears throat> right? He came down with and made up these laws. He had, a, he had an inspiration, and he made up the laws. If you think that, then there's nothing really to be happy about. And there's nothing really to, you know, to be sa sacrificing yourself for also. The Jews have sacrificed their lives for the Torah and the commandments because they're stupid, right? They, they, they really believe all this stuff. That Mo, you know, that Moses came down and said, God gave it to me, you know, and everybody said, oh, yes, we believe. I mean, that it means that Jews are the most stupid nation in the history of the world. They believe in this, and we've been killed and murdered and massacred because we believe in it, but we stubbornly believe in this. And not only doesn't even promise going to heaven, doesn't promise you going to heaven, you just believe it because we're just stupid, we just believe it, right? And so, I mean, there is a good point in that. You can say that. Because really, to believe in this, it, 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 it's against logic. It's against logic. <clears throat> but it's true. And when you feel the truth of it, that God really does exist, and God really did give us the commandments, <clears throat> if you're crazy enough to believe this, and every Jew is crazy enough to believe it, every Jew, that's the essence of the Jewish soul, then... It's a little bit deeper than that because God has a will. It's the commandments. God gets angry. You don't do his commandments. And God gets happy if you do the commandments. And the fact that you can make God happy, and when you think about what God is, that God is not our enemy or our competition. God is creating us all the time. Take it or leave it. Believe it or not. When you think about that, that God is creating everything. God is infinitely, infinitely, infinitely good. He's creating heaven. And when we do a commandment, we actually make God happy that we make use of every, in, we reveal the infin, infinity of every instant. And then that should make us happy. And that happiness, and that negates all the problems in the world. 
that negates all of the, the, the negative things in the world that there are. But we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Huh? We'll talk about it more tomorrow, God willing. But that's the importance of the commandments. And, and I, I'm telling you, I see it. I go every day now since the war started. I used to go just on Fridays to this big marketplace. I still go there. <clears throat> but the um, I have this little clip. Maybe I'll even show it to you. They, they put it on, on this uh, TikTok. Some fellow went through the marketplace and it, with music playing. And he, when he came by to me, I danced with him a little bit. And they, somebody caught this and they put it on TikTok. I, maybe I'll send it to you. I'll see if I can do it. In any case, <clears throat> um, when people put on the to, to fill in, non-religious people, you see that they're happy. Suddenly it makes them happy. <clears throat> feel good. They're not doing it to go to heaven. They're not doing it for any reason whatsoever. They're doing it only because they're Jews, and it's a Jewish thing. <clears throat> you see that there's a certain air of happiness that comes over. That's the happiness of the commandments. And what is the happiness? Because some are, even if they don't know it, but they're making God happy. They're, they're making the whole universe happy when they do a commandment. That's what we believe. Okay, let us now do the Dramachut. Here we go. Mm -hmm.